Do you ever experience symptoms like brain fog, fatigue, headache, joint pain, or do you ever just not really fully feel your best? If this is the case, you may be experiencing food intolerance. Watch this whole video and I'm gonna walk you step by step on how we can fix this problem. So today I wanna to talk about gut health and food insensitivity, and I really think that this topic deserves an entire video on its own because it's something that could really be affecting you and it could be affecting so many parts of your life that you don't know. The symptoms could be completely unrelated to your gut, but they could still be coming from foods that you're eating and how you tolerate them. In fact, it's actually possible that certain foods you're eating that seem completely harmless, foods that you've been eating your entire life could be causing some kinds of sensitivity. Even if you're eating a vegan diet, a paleo diet, the healthiest diet in the world. Some foods just don't work well with certain people and it's also really hard to figure this out because I'm assuming you eat a variety of different foods throughout the day. I know I do. I don't only eat the same like two or three foods every day. So to figure out which one is causing it would be a lot of work. It's something that could take weeks or months of an elimination diet, trying and testing different foods, seeing how you react, journaling it. It's a whole process. So the best way to figure out if you have a food intolerance is through a food sensitivity test. And the first thing I wanna point out is that a food sensitivity test is very different than a food allergy test. So these test different things, they're based on different reactions. Food allergies are very intense. These are things that can be life-threatening, they're really dangerous, like you could cause you not to breathe, your throat to close up, could give you um, hives, any kind of really severe reaction. So that's something you have to actually go into the doctor and test. And they both test different antibodies. So Antibodies are something that we carry in our body and they carry out immune responses. And when you're doing a food allergy test, they test for IgE antibodies. This is something, like I said, you have to go to the doctor to do, you can't do at home. Now a food sensitivity test looks at a different antibody. This is the IgG antibody. So this is immunoglobulin G versus immunoglobulin E, just in case you were wondering what those stand for. So food sensitivity tests actually never used to be so accessible to do at home, but now this is something we have the option of doing. And even though we you know, are testing these foods that aren't life-threatening, but like I said, they can still affect your life in many ways. And it can really be debilitating because you could just be walking around with this constant headache every you know, two or three times a month. And you're like, why am I always getting a headache two or three times a month? What does it cost from? Like, what food am I eating? Is it even cost from food? So in some ways, I almost feel like this is just as important as going to get a food allergy test because it is the day-to-day -day things that you will notice. So just to give you a little background on what food sensitivity really is, it's basically a delayed reaction by that IgG antibody, so that immunoglobulin G. This is the most abundant antibody in our body. So we have a bunch of these, we have different kinds, but IgG is the most common. So when you eat a food and you have any kind of intolerance to it, this is gonna give you a delayed reaction and different studies show that this can present as fatigue, as joint pain, as headache, it can cause stomach upset. So there's a big range of symptoms that it can cause and this is why I mentioned earlier that it's really, really hard to kind of pinpoint and diagnose this. So that's why I say if you are feeling anything less than perfect, which I'm sure most of us are, I would do a food sensitivity test. I'm huge on diagnostic testing in general. If you follow any of my content on Instagram, I'm constantly talking about how I love doing blood tests, gut health tests, like everything I can do because you never know what's going on in your body and until you test it and see what's going on, then you don't really know what you're supposed to take or what you're supposed to do. Like what diet you should eat, what vitamins or supplements you should eat. I don't even like recommending vitamins to people unless I know what their micronutrient and blood panel shows. So I'm really big on diagnostic testing and I think this is just the next step in that direction is a food sensitivity test. So like I said before, the reason I think that taking a food sensitivity test at home is better is because the only other way to do this without a test is to do a complete elimination diet. So basically what that is, is you eat one food at a time and see how you react to it because there's no other way to know. In fact, when I was trying to figure out what was causing my bloating, this was like a six month process and I literally would eat like one thing, see how I looked, see how I felt, write it out in a journal. It was really brutal. I had to do this for like weeks and it worked, but if there was a test I could do and just like prick my finger and send it in and they could tell me what caused bloat and what didn't, I would have much rather done that. So when it comes to food sensitivity, I think this is a much better option. This is the test by Everlywell. Now, the box isn't completely brand new because I've already sent in my test and gotten the results. So I'm just showing you what it looks like here. It's really, really user friendly. It has like step one and step two. It gives you this little Lancet device. This is what it looks like. Not too scary, it's just like a little prick. It doesn't hurt. You just basically prick the end of your finger. Well, before I say that, you have Band-Aids, 
alcohol wipes, gauze. It's all very sterile and professional. So even though you're doing this at home, you want to make sure that you are in a clean environment, you wash your hands, just do it as professionally as you can at home, but they make that really easy. They also give you a little booklet and a guide that explains exactly how to do it. So you shouldn't really have any questions, but you could always go on their website to ask any if you are confused by anything. So you prick your finger and then you just put little blood samples on four different sections on this piece of paper and this is what you mail back in and that's it. It literally takes like one second. You have a special code so this is all very confidential Anything medical should be really confidential. No one else should have access to it. So you can log in with your code. It doesn't have to be with your name. And once you mail it back in with a prepaid mail label, they give you your results online. They'll just email you when it's ready and you can go in and log on and see what you have. I did this test and I was really surprised at the things I got back because the one food that I'm most sensitive to is something that I eat all the time. It's actually in one of my videos in a recipe. So I'm gonna pay attention next time I eat it and see what happens. This also brings up another good point. Sometimes you can have a food sensitivity to something, but it doesn't necessarily cause any symptoms. So if that's the case, you can just watch it, see how you react, and just be aware of it. Like when you're getting a blood test, let's say your DNA shows you don't react well to something or you shouldn't do something, we're not perfect. We're still gonna live our normal lives. We're gonna make mistakes. So you can still eat certain foods that you're intolerant to, but just being aware is so important because let's say it's something important or you have a day that you want to feel your best or a week you want to feel your best, then you'll know, okay, you know what? I'm going to really stick to the things that I tolerate best and that work best for me. So they mail you back your results and you can see what you have based on basically the severity. So you've got high, moderate, mild, and low. And then you can just see if it's low, maybe that's something you still include in your daily diet. But also you could even do an elimination diet with just those foods. Now you're not starting with every food on the planet to test out how you feel, to, how you feel with it. You can just look at the ones that you are maybe mild or moderate to and one day start with a clean slate before you eat anything else that morning. Try this food and then really pay attention and notice how you react. If you do want to kind of try and test the foods that come back on your sensitivity test, I recommend keeping a journal. I thought it would be kind of cool to share with you guys my food intolerances. Maybe you don't care, maybe you do, but I'm just going to read it to you and see so you can kind of understand how it works. Okay, so here are my results. I actually put them on my phone just so I could remember because I'm extra like that. So for me personally, there was nothing that I was highly reactive or sensitive to, which is a great sign. I was lucky there, but I did have something that was moderate and that was chia seed, which is so weird because I love chia seeds. You know that I'm vegan. I use chia seeds as a replacement for egg. I make chia seed pudding. So now I'm going to really watch and see how I react and maybe this has been causing my bloat. It's going to be a sad day, but you know, that's just life. So then there was a lot that were mild reactivity, blueberries, that's really sad, kale, squash, milk, cows. I'm glad that milk and cows I'm reactive to because I would never eat them anyway. Banana, cheese, cheddar, eggplant, cabbage, garlic, oregano, malt. It's actually kind of cool. Even though I don't eat cheese, they even break it down into cheddar cheese and mozzarella cheese. So in case you, you know, want to know the specifics on that, cola, coffee. <laughs> gonna have to be an exception. I'm gonna have to keep drinking coffee and cottage cheese. So apparently I was born to be vegan because I'm intolerant to three different kinds of cheeses and cows. So that's a good thing. And then low reactivity. This is like ginger, black tea, which I eat all the time. Lettuce, kelp, yeast, green beans, spinach. I mean, I won't keep reading this list to you. It's actually pretty long. But I eat a lot of these foods and I personally don't, I definitely don't notice anything in my gut, but I'm gonna start paying attention to my energy levels, um, my joints, like see if my muscles hurt. I'm just gonna pay attention and see what happens. You never know. So those are my results to my Everly Well test. You know, Everly Well actually has a lot of at-home tests you can do. This is the one that I was trying out now, but I'm probably gonna try more just because it's easy and cool and you can do it at home. I really liked the food sensitivity test because it tests over 96 different kinds of food and I think that pretty much covers like the amount of variety of food that I eat. So I think I'm good there. So if you guys want to try this at home test, you can go to everlywell.com. I will post my promo code in the description and I'll pop it up on the screen. You can get 15% off if you want to check it out. Let me know in the comments if you do try it or if you try another test. I'm curious to know what you guys want to try, what you're most interested in. Um, let me know any questions you have in the comments. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.